you go back to um, page. Under administration, federal water stormwater requirements. Um, that that was the thing that you had talked about for several years in a row that was going to be coming into uh, to be put into effect. Is it in effect now? Permit's been issued. Um, when we looked at the permit and what it what it got issued, the workload that we anticipated that it would tell us to do the first year got reduced by about 25%, so I literally took 25% of that line and reduced it from uh, 50 to 40 uh, because with the work that we have to do, and it has to do with, um, well, some of the mapping that we're doing under asset management, but also it has to do with more with preparing uh, how we would manage stormwater at uh, every town property, town hall, <coughs> schools. They're making me responsible for the schools. Um, town parking lots, wastewater treatment plant, transfer station, the whole works. So this this forty thousand is going to address a very hectic year with respect to paperwork. I probably am going to sub a good portion of it out because we physically can't get it done. I just there's not enough brain to go around. Okay, under engineering services, Chris, um, mm -hmm. the the fifty seven percent increase. Um, you have, um, it talks about uh, one of the things is Hobson Manchester flooding, Ross Ave, uh, Charles Street. So the last night you were talking, the selectmen at the selectmen's meeting, they were talking about doing a sort of an overall, uh, the big picture thing. Is that going to change this, possibly change this number? It, it sounded as if this, what they're talking about doing last night would be more inclusive of looking at the big picture, and that's why I wondered if if this number here, um, if that, you know, if it, if it even should be there at all. Oh, it should be there at all. I mean, that, that number... Is just a component. The Hobbs Center Manchester right. flooding issue is a component of that 47,000. If you look at our miscellaneous on <coughs> services, that's whenever we need someone to go look at something structurally. Um, we need a structural engineer to do that. We've had that come up quite a few times. Um, any of the wetland permitting, we have culverts off of uh, ancient highway that need to be repaired. So we always have to get a wetland scientist to go out there, do the high observable, and then fill out the paperwork. So if you're looking at that whole line, the Hobson Manchester flooding, that was going to be what we had in addition to support any Warren article that went forward. Okay. It wasn't a standalone um, item. So we don't have a structural engineer on staff? Correct. Mm, correct. But you're both civil engineers, correct? correct. Are you uh, licensed, you know, PEs? We're both professional both engineers, right? Yeah. Perfect. Licensed very good. Staff. We're very lucky to have you. Um, the next thing that I wanted to mention <coughs> real quick is the um, under sidewalk and curbs. Mm -hmm. um, it seems as if I heard last night um, there was a, you've got $26,000, but did I hear a, uh, a warrant article as well mm -hmm. last night for, was it $40,000? Right, it was. So 50. why, is it 50? So, you know, it's, you've got it in here, and you're also going to have a warrant article. What could you <coughs> that, perhaps? I mean, I know we're not talking warrant articles tonight, but I'm just wondering why it's in here. The last time we did that, the yeah. warrant article was for how much? Well, it was the same scenario to your. It was twenty six thousand in the budget, and then we had a warrant article, I think, for forty eight fifty thousand, and that was for uh, the section of High Street that was Academy, you know, Marston. Sorry, Marston, Marston to Hobbs, uh, mm -hmm. that we had to remove the trees, replace, and do that section. When we get the, got the cost per linear foot to just do that little bit of sidewalk. We tried multiple <coughs> ways to get bigger bang for our buck, and we started um, teaming with the school district and looking at some of the improvements they want to do, especially at Winnicunit in front of, um, my brain is not working, in front of Toll Ave, thank you, <laughs> um, Center School, uh, some improvements there, so we put it out to bid again, trying to get even better prices, and at the end of the day, when you're talking 26000 in our budget, that's for little pieces. That's for the 
accessible ramps. Uh, we put some up on Exeter Road. We redid a section of High Street this year uh, to raise it to work with the flooding. Uh, we redid a small piece over on, uh, I think it was Mill. You know, little pieces. That's the 26. The Warren article stuff is how to try to get section to section okay. and how bad that is. I so that's, that's why it's separate. That's a good explanation. Thank you very and much. And that work last year when we had the 45 and the 25 came to like 70000 With that seventy, we did $86,000 worth of work mm -hmm. uh, only because that's what the minimum part of the contract. I basically chopped off sections of it. We did, project. but at the same time, we realized that that was integral to the street, so we used curbing money and some paving money and got the $86,000 worth of work done. So the same scenario would occur here. We just... Okay. Thank you. If we put the 40 in, we... Enough said. Yeah. Thanks. Under municipal sanitation, um, the grease disposal that you talked about, yep. um, and it, it's at zero percent, but when you talk about a, a three-foot floating uh, of grease, cake of yeah. grease at the Church Street pump station, is that unique just to Church Street pump station, or does it happen at other spots as well? <coughs> it does happen in the other pump stations, but not to that severity. Extent. Is that from the summer? Yeah. <laughs> the restaurants, um, they are supposed to dispose of grease Properly. They're not supposed to be dumping this down the drain, right? Correct. And, and for the most part, they do. Um, I this think from residential, would you say? Some residential, yeah. Um, but it's funny. The grease... Sounds like a lot of grease. It, I, I know one or two properties down there that are owned by third parties, and they, they, they lease out management or operation of the property. And I'm sure their lease agreement talks about... We have to leave the grease trap clean. It's not like your, a grease trap is not like your dishwasher. You, you, you do want that clean after every run. A grease trap is supposed to look dirty. If it looks pristine, you're using too hot a water or you're using too strong a chemicals to strip it clean. It's supposed to look greasy. That means it's working, okay? So they've taken it, and, and we see a little bit of that every single year. Um, this year, I think um, it's a little more um, problematic. Uh, maybe they all did a better job. I don't, I don't know. Um, the other thing is we are seeing that this pump station operates differently than other pump stations, than, than the previous pump station we had. We have a much bigger wet well. So it is able to store it. I think before... It used to literally pass through and show up in the plant more. Now it just seems to stay in that pump station. Which is lot, which bad as it is for us to have to pay to get re to remove it. It's much better that we're getting it at the pump yeah. station and not through the force mains not at the treatment You're not plant. clogging up those pipes yes. under the marsh. Yeah, and, and or in the plant because yeah. then it's, uh, that's, it's probably we have problems. a harder time dealing with it. In yeah, it's plant. a problem, but it's probably a good problem. And the last thing I have is under um, the... Repairs and maintenance, the sewer line maintenance um, that's gone up 17.65%. You have $200,000 in that. And the only thing I want to mention is that you talked about um, the, the clay pipes that are behind uh, Ashworth that connect over to, uh, they connect to the Church Street pump station, I guess. Yeah, there's yeah. a mixture. Yes. So this yeah. Transmarsh yeah. one is, some of it is, I'm sorry, I call it Transmarsh, there's right. another name, if you, um, the different studies. Some of these are actually PVC lines. Um, what are first and foremost in lining are the manhole structures themselves. So as the water comes up, we've already taken the first step, put the Pamrex covers on it to stop the water from getting in. But if you have any type of joints, <laughs> joints in the bricks or the precast structures, and they aren't lined up. Water is just coming in as soon as it's rising up. So yeah. and that, this is that inflow is a big, big problem. Big you number know, for the, our the right Pierce. The so you're going to not dig up the pipes, the clay pipes, but actually reline them in place. Some of them are going to have to be relined in place because literally they're under structures, mm -hmm. so right. we won't be able to dig them up. But, but some of them, depending on where they're located, mm -hmm. whether they're in the dry or not, how close they are to wetlands will determine which approach we use to rehab uh, and re 
repair these pipes, operate them. Can and I ask in, a question here? Wait, 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 wait. education. No, no, no. You can. You're going to be able to ask all the questions you want in a minute. I, I just to finish up with that. Um, I heard at one of the, I think it was a selectman's meeting. Um, they were discussing. Charlie Preston was there talking about Glade Path and the fact that you put the manhole covers that are sealed, I guess, in right. order to prevent this inflow every time there's a high tide. Yep. Um, and so you're making some headway on that. We did 11 structures. 10 or 11, in yeah. In the last month. Yeah. So that, um, you're right. It's, it's called a Pamerex cover. We buy them out of Brazil. Um, so five to seven hundred dollars a piece. If you know what the going rate is, um, we buy them ten to twenty at a time. Um, in fact, it, it, there's money left over in Toby's sewer storm drainage and sewer lines this year. We're buying ten more mm -hmm. to replace the ten we put in, and they're all done in an effort one, one to meet the stormwater requirements under MS4 to cut down on infiltration to the plant to save the structures. If we have brackish water going through them, it, is, it tends to accelerate the deterioration of those structures. Thank you very much. That was a very um, very good presentation, by the way. Um, so do I have some, anybody have some questions? David, you wanted to go first? I, I had a couple of other ones. I don't want to stick to the relining all the way here. I'm just trying to understand how you reline a pipe. You say, well, rather than putting a new pipe it's in the uh, ground, we can reline it's it. It's actually how really do you cool. <laughs> It's a... Uh, Don't take it out of the ground. No, no. They make a... It's a long sock with no toe. The toe's <laughs> cut off. Okay? Uh, and it's uh, a very thick sock, like, let's say, wool. And they literally impregnate it. It comes out, out of the roll dry. They pull it through a chemical, that <coughs> chemical bath. But what it is, it's an epoxy. And they literally send a mouse down the sewer line. Uh, pulling this impregnated cloth. We've, we've stopped the flow. There's no flow coming through it. We've cleaned it ahead of time. And when we get to the next manhole, they grab the end of the sock, they put uh, an air bladder in each end and inflate it. And the sock literally inflates to the inside diameter of the pipe. They then um, pass ultra, uh, a set of lights um, ultraviolet lights, they pull them, it's a timed event um, because the ultraviolet light makes the epoxy set up and then you're, what you, so what you're left with is a pipe inside of a pipe when you get done and they just trim off the excess. And in many cases you can do it because it's super thin so you're not losing capacity of your pipe. Uh, yeah. Next questions. Um, back on the electricity. Mm -hmm. Um, a quick question. Under wastewater electricity? Uh, yeah, highways and streets. We had a little electricity at yep. the okay. beginning. Yep. And it was 8.64. I just had a couple of minor questions, believe me. And you said, you were talking about the iridescent, whatever, the, the new type bulbs. So my question is, how many lights, ballpark, please, does the town have? I'm making up a number, 5,000. And you're like one fifth through, so we've done a thousand. We have four thousand to go. Well, these these lights that I'm talking about under this electric bill are only within the highway garage and the office. Um, they're not the street lights. They're right not the street either. street lights were moved out of this budget last year. Um, I believe that's he took uh, Fred and Christy took hydrants and. Street lights and put them under their own separate account or lines, and they, so they're not in my budget. They're not in police. They're not in fire. They're not in anybody's. It's just civic lights, I guess you could say. So this electricity only deals with how often, you know, what we do internally within the within the highway garage slash office. Thank you. Yeah. Now the question, uh, two questions. I guess, but they end up being for finance because we talked about gasoline and diesel fuel. And you said they were done by finance. That would be Christy? Yes. So I see for gasoline, it, it's going up 37.13%. How is that figured? I mean, I've noticed gas has gone up, but I didn't think it went up 37% in the last year because it was low. Could you help me with that, please? I'll put it in any seat for 
for a second. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, so we can hear you. Basically, what we do is we track the gasoline by month. We have a spreadsheet, and we so we get all of the gallons used. We have can break it down by every single department across the budget. So please fire all of them, and then we total up the average gallons, and then we do the average price per gallon, and then calculate it based on that. So if you're should have brought it out of my book, but if you're looking at the detail sheets, it'll tell you how many gallons I base it on, and then it'll tell you what rate we are using. I believe in this budget, do you guys have a right one? 1.84 for gas. We're using a dollar eighty-four mm -hmm. for the price. Last year's budget, though, I think it was in at like a dollar seventy-five because that's what had been the average for that previous year. Um, so we've right. kind of really secured those numbers in the past couple of years of budgeting. So because before it was just always the same yeah. dollar value and basically the same number of gallons. But now we literally track it by the month. Are we increasing in, it seems to me what you just said, it wouldn't go up 37% if it was the same. It also appears that we're using more gasoline. Correct. It, do we have more vehicles on the road? Do we have more police cars? We actually vehicles? have less. Less vehicles? They break down. <laughs> I can look for you, though, and tell you how many gallons the budget was based on last year compared to this year. I can give you that information. I don't have it in front of me now. Oh, that's fine. Um, but I can look at last year's budget, though, and Because if it you, only went from $1.77 to, like, $1 whatever you 84, said. 84, yeah. 84. Right, and we're saying and, 14 and it was, And you were saying you went down in usage. Correct. That doesn't make any sense with this. Right. I can tell you how many gallons it was based on last year, and then that way we would be able to compare exactly what you're asking. Thank you. Can I suggest mm -hmm. that we uh, have that detailed discussion in the same that we do the funds? Mr. Tanner? Oh, absolutely. That would be a very good time. Okay. And the same thing with the, the diesel fuel. Yep. Yeah. Please. Thank you. Any other questions, David? No, that that's... I think All right. Who yeah, else has um, questions? I did. Oh, I'm sorry. You have more. Ooh, a high equipment winter. Go ahead. It hit. <coughs> I wanted to ask a question at the time, and I made notes, but uh, it, when we're at the height of equipment for the winter, it's up 83%, and I know you addressed it. I have the answer to your other question. I have last year's budget yep. stuff. Try not to throw anything away. It's sad. Um, let me get back to that page. When This is the backup. Um, last year's is Yeah. Gasoline was eight thousand four fifty six, and diesel was six thousand two hundred fifteen. So yeah, we're, it appears that we're using almost six thousand more gallons. So we've increased the volume. And right. what might be the reason for that? That's like a I mean, I don't want to throw Christy in the but I think we were last year's numbers. I think were a partial of the year. I don't think it was a true. Yeah, as true. But, well, she'll take care of that. I mean, we have, we're going to have that for seven years. Okay. Yeah, we have we have literally less equipment than we did a year ago. I mean, physically less. Plus, to to with all separate. the retirements, and I have less employees to drive less equipment. So, um, under the snow and ice removal, the height equipment was eighty three percent. Is that equipment? That you borrow, or is it people you hire for part-time? We have a, time? a contra contractor Contractors. that we use. We assign them. Uh, they have one plow route and two plow routes, sorry. And they also have the high street downtown area. So does that include the contractor and his own truck? Yes. Thank you. Multiple Keep, vehicles. Yes, multiple vehicles. Yeah. And we think it's this year it's going to be increased because what their charges are going up. Or you just Some of the rates have gone up, but also we're noticing the uh, just purely the amount of time it takes to do it. Not a, it's, it's really a, you know if we have a mild winter, less than 20 inches of snow, you'll see that number tumble. If we have 60 to 80 inches of snow, that's probably more reflective of what that number is going to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Anything? They only get called when we get called. As a matter of fact, uh, like on a typical night, let's say it's snowing, an inch and a half builds up, PD calls. Uh, we go out with uh, Salt Run first, which is five of my guys, not the outside contractor. Uh, sand and salt, uh, get the road surfaces mealy, meaning you know loose enough that we can plow so that we're not creating pack. And if the storm continues to go on, 
um, that's when they get called, when the rest of the staff gets called. I know. I've lived here for 37 years, and I can tell you that Hampton does a wonderful job plowing, period. Which was, uh, that I know. So. Thank you. Yes. All set, David? Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Okay. Who? Oh, Regina? I have a question. Actually, I have one comment. I know we're going to postpone it, but on the uh, gasoline... I believe the original number that the finance director presented last year was decreased by the budget committee, and I think that is probably what's making that 37% stand out a little bit more. But I also caution that as of 930, we've spent almost 17,000 and we've budgeted less than 20. So I think that, um, which is close, that's only leaving us three grand for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where that 37% is coming from, because her original calculation was not, I don't believe was the 19743 for gasoline. Right, right, yeah, probably not. And also I want to say on the um, extra SOAR agreement, it's gone up from like a little less than 7,000 to 26 or something. 20, 23 and change, I believe. Is it possible to... I was actually reading the Exeter new implemented so fees. The how much manager. we contribute? You'd have to ask the town manager. <laughs> I have yeah. zero um, skill set with or knowledge of how that was put together. Or mm -hmm. it, it it has to do with the number of users we have and um, currently assigned. And then I'm not. There's numbers in there to where they can retrieve or share portions of their capital improvements, i.e., their new plant. Okay. But I, that's. I was just wondering where we compared to the rest of the Exeter uh, intake, as far as percentage-wise, just to justify that increase from. And I'm sure it's justified, but that's pretty. It's what. I was with a homeowner increase. from Exeter. I can't the top of my head right now, but earlier this year and very small home eight thousand dollar tax bill and a four thousand dollar sewer bill and only a three-bedroom house and i was like yeah. so i i don't think we're i i know the state laws wouldn't allow it as far as the sewer rules under the env right. rules there there are defined limits as to what they can proportionally pass on, but I'd have to default to what the manager knows about the agreement in more detail. I don't. Anything else, Regina? I'm good. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jones, one quick comment. Um, last year's budget committee took the gasoline and diesel numbers from Kristen, and actually we increased, I believe, the cemetery fuel above that. So it wasn't a number that we came up with as a budget committee. It was just an adjustment that occurred during the budget committee session as a recommendation from the administration. Right, but I'm thinking... So I just wanted to make that clarity. That in that line item hasn't been addressed yet by this committee, so I think that is accounting for why it's a 37% increase. Uh, well, that we're going to get into in a subsequent yeah. meeting. I just wanted to be clear that right, that number we produced was actually thinking. coming from the administration, mm -hmm. and we actually increased some of it. So... Uh, I just wanted to make that comment, and I'll let you go back to the question phase. Sorry for the interruption. No, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, was, thank you for that clarification. 000, 000, okay. Um, so are you well. done? I'm good. Okay. Um, anybody else? Oh, Sonny, please. Yeah. Okay. As I'm looking at this, yes, you know, you're, you're showing a 4.3 percent increase. We see the police want five, and the fire want six. You know. When the tax, when the voters look at the the Warren articles, or, you know what's going to happen if you go to the fall budget? Is there grant money coming in? Are you applying for grant money? There must be some federal government. Well, grant money would be project related. I right, understand that. You've got a lot of projects most of this lined up. Is so. Most of this money is, you know, well over half of it is labor, uh, well uh, aware of that. electricity, so that I don't believe their grants are applicable strictly to um, uh, I mean, operating costs. You know, I know you can you move your money around any way you have to. You know, I'm just thinking 
Yep, you know, when the voters go in the booth and see, because their income isn't going up. Social Security is, what, 1.95, and the health care is going to, it's already taken that away. So I'm just trying to figure out how you're going to get these projects done. Are you going to do a bond issue? Or? With respect to stuff that's in here? No, no. No. Um, but yeah. I know a number of things have been already trimmed yeah. or decided. I believe it's, they're going to be bond issues given the size. Yeah, the dollars. I mean, you've got a lot of projects you're working on. I, right. I understand that. And, and their yeah. impacts to the tax rate will be calculated, I'm sure, by uh, Christie through finance to determine what those are. Yeah. I do understand it's a lot to ask. Is that all, Sonny? Yeah. Okay. This Thank is my nickel and dime. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Bob, please. You haven't mentioned anything about the Sun Valley pipe problem. Where is that at? Well, um, it's not in, we're not at a, a critical situation yet. Um, probably where wastewater doesn't freeze that easily because it's biologically active it's also being pumped under pressure so but yeah uh, the idea would be we'd have to work through a permitting process if we want to rebury that line right now we're just we're in a monitoring situation with that and it's a small matter you mentioned signs is there any likelihood they'll have any evacuation signs Yes, but if we do purchase them, we won't literally be putting them <coughs> putting them out. We would only put them out in the emergency. You know, that we, there's a, a number of those types of signs that we have. Mm -hmm. Some of them are in a trailer assigned to Seabrook Station, mm -hmm. and some of them are within our own sign room. Mm -hmm. um, but you, if we did purchase them, you won't see them out on the road. Most communities have had those signs on the road forever. So you just have a different philosophy of that? When to it's use a them, I guess. philosophy. It's not my philosophy. It's a philosophy, if you will, in, in me working in concert with the Emergency Operations Center, mm -hmm. the chief, the fire chief, the yeah. state. So, I mean, if they all instruct me to put them up tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'll get it done. But it, as yet, yeah. it's not been done. Yeah. There's nothing in this year's budget, but aren't, don't we have to reach a point where you you do some fiscal planning for long periods of time before we get to the point we're at now where the, the plants in dire straits, the Rockingham Planning Commission is indicating that sea level rise could compromise a third of the assessed value of the beach mm -hmm. or the town. Right. And it just seems, uh, and we have immediately we have problems of flooding at the beach and other major issues. So would it make sense to hire a fiscal planner to project these needs over 30, 40, 50 years and address them year to year so we don't end up waiting until we're at this point? Well, I don't disagree with you. Um, I know when I took this position over two years ago, my discussions with the manager and he approved was that I divulged to you, the taxpayers, to the budget committee, all those things within my operational view. So that's why you've seen things like the seawall, the force mains, the wastewater treatment plant. Um, Keith, before me, brought forth the Church Street pump station. Um, we've discussed or mentioned infiltration. There's still clay pipes down in the beach area that need to be done. Um, yeah, I think part of the fiscal plan or that, you're, that you're talking about is, I think it's becoming a movement on us as the departments to bring all these things forward, or at least to the public's attention. And then through the process of this committee and working with the budget, uh, the planning board through the CIP, and then working with the board of selectmen, you, as a community, just to, to, we are determining our fate, if you will, and we, when we decide which projects that we want to bring forth and fund and which ones we don't. And I totally get the idea of, um, as a fellow taxpayer, um, 
to, you know, that, that there has to be some give and take every single year, that it all isn't going to get done at the, 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 the same year. Thank God the sea level rises and occur, and occur over a four-year period because we got a lot of work to do. But there's, so I, I think we're in a, we are in a good position where we are prioritizing. We are developing, if you will, the CIP. You saw Jennifer mention tonight a number of things. The engineering budget that we'd like to see a percentage increase on to address these issues. Um, the sewer and drain line, where you went from 140 to, I think, 170. Um, we're, we're asking for a proportional increase to get these things done over a longer period of time, at least out to the next seven years. Um, and how you we pay for those or finance those is, is something we work out with the Board of Select. Mm -hmm. So I think we are, you know, part of a fiscal plan, any fiscal plan or any fiscal planner is identifying the needs and, um, if you will, the sources of income or, or what, how much the taxpayer can can or should reasonably bear, but I think that fiscal plan is a good tool for us, is our CIP that we use. <coughs> That's the way I see it. Beyond that, um, I don't have a I don't have a vision as what 20 years is going to be like. But we're kind of in the position we are in now because people 20 and 30 years ago didn't plan for the replacement of this plant. Well, it goes back even further than that. One of the discussions that as engineers we sit around and have is we come back from World War II and um, and I, I'll try and be brief. One of the things the Eisenhower administration realized, okay, we need an interstate transportation system. And, and there's a big building boom through the 50s and 60s to get that uh, in the ground. And it involved a number of bridges. And then 30 years later in the 90s, we're, wow, we're really surprised. All those bridges need work. Um, because even back then it was, um, we'll just build, keep building, making more, building more, making more. Um, but at some point you have to realize that if you've built a 10,000 square foot house, you better be have enough capital to maintain that 10 foot uh, square house. I think that's why some of us jokingly say, oh, it'd be nice to live in that house. And my wife will say, well, no, it's got seven bathrooms to be cleaned. There's no way that's going to be a nice house. So she's physically, you know, or she said, those are the seven bathrooms you're going to have to clean. Um, so. As, as a society, and it isn't just New Hampshire or New England, it's nationwide, m more attention needs to be paid to maintaining the infrastructure that we've built. Uh, 1972, the Clean Water Act came in, and that's when you see market improvements in our wastewater treatment plant in 74, 86, and 90. Well, guess what? The host 84 improvements are now, what, 35 or 40 years of age. The, the, the wastewater, the raw pumps that are in the plant, the three raw pumps, originally installed in 1974. They've been in position since then, spinning and turning. It's like having the same engine in your car since 1974, if the car still exists. So, yeah, we, we as a society, nationwide, have decided you know, more attention needs should be and needs to be paid attention to the infrastructure we've built. And when we get nipped in the butt is when you have things like sea level rise sneak up on you. And you say, yeah, geez, I wasn't prepared for that one. Um, that's, that's where we get, that's where we feel this pressure mm -hmm. that we're getting hit from multiple sides. Yeah, between sea level rise and the wastewater treatment plant. Wastewater treatment and roads and, you know, bridges around the state. The number one red list bridge is the Neil Underwood Bridge. It's the state's issue. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I so just, they're, they're I, all here. I would just like to see a collective coming together so we maintain the assets going forward mm -hmm. in a logical, timely fashion so they don't all come to the election end at the same time. Would agree. Yeah. Okay. Thank Absolutely you. Agree. And hopefully the CIP is the process that we are getting that done. Okay, anything else, Bob? No. Mike? Uh, this is a great discussion. What happened to Anne's Lane? About two years ago, there was a discussion we about... We run out of time. 
right out of town. Jennifer's. Um, yeah. <laughs> money and coming. It's a. Uh, it's there. It is. We've gotten the engineers on board. This is part of the engineering funds. I went in, I think, oh, early September, October, as I was trying to kick off the Lafayette Road sewer, uh, get that one done. And we were out of engineering funds to be able to get it done. And then seeing the dollars for what a full dig construction was going to be, we went back and forth and worked out, can we do some of this lining? That was uh, part of the discussion right. so we, a year or so ago, maybe two now. But we've determined that you, we can't line services, so yeah. we need to traditionally dig the services, yeah. line the main, do the stretch, and it's almost 2,000 feet, which is as long, if not longer, than this Lafayette Road project and time one. Well, it's happening. It's not not happening. That Money's been saved for paving. It's a highly traveled road, mm -hmm. and it's probably one of the worst we have for the amount of traffic that's on it. And I, I, it's, it's 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 been on the it's paving plan. It's a disgrace. You know, I'm I'm at the point where I it is can't issue. can't really pave more roads until I start repairing. Yeah. Repair or replace or upgrade the sewer below. Well, right there. don't don't let it fall off the radar because there's the some radar. residents up there that are pleased um, it takes time and I, I know but when it shows up two or three years and then it just kind of falls off the side somewhere you you know because you're dealing with it but nobody else know it I mean it's a forgotten street it looks like it's a forgotten street well, it isn't because you're working to get to the point where you can do it right but people are getting frustrated because it just sits and, and that's like that's a concern that I heard from Drake Side Road residents four years ago, and, yeah. and now this year, you know, there was a number. Of, I've had to learn some patience being in this position, yeah. and that I see all these things that need to get done that we talk about in the fiscal plan, and I see there's only there's so many hours in the day. There's a certain construction season. There's a limit to what she and I can physically manage yeah. and do, yeah. um, and. Uh, so I think you know we've we've made a great stride this summer, in that Drake Side Road, the yeah. bridge abutments are gone. That traffic hazard is no more, and that's a beautiful road to travel now. Um, you've got uh, you know the, the Lafayette Road; it will be done in the spring. The, the remaining small distance of it, but you know we work with Aquarium, we get the water replaced. So I think we've made. You're making progress. We've made no huge, question. We're making huge progress. But when you look at what we've gotten done in a year, yeah. and you know, Ice Pond Dam, we're going to start that uh, December one. We're using some of the granite from Drake Side Road. So I mean, we're nipping, we're prioritizing these projects, and we're counting them down. And we're we're doing them. I think it's good that you bring it up because then it allows us to say it again. They are not forgotten. Right. They are still in the works. Well. The question to me was, why did they pave Watson's Lane and they haven't touched Ann's Lane? And I said, I, I, I think it's because PDC of the utilities, okay. mm -hmm. and they, they're going to have to dig it up, and why pave it if you're going to dig it up? You might as well get exactly the bottom the right done answer. first. And they said, well, Watson's Lane's got sewer in it, but they didn't dig that up. But it was done a lot later than Ann's Lane was. It's also PVC. Right. So right. it didn't so need not, any... Right. Exactly. Underground work, all it needed was the service. Right. So that was the, the justification, and I thought that's what it was. Yep. But, you know, the guy on the ends lane says, how come? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. I I could answer it, but right. but I'd rather you answer it because you're dealing with it. I'm not. Yep. I just see it sit there, and I sputter every time I go over it because it's terrible yep. in a truck. It's probably terrible in a car, but... It's worse than a truck, <laughs> especially when you're buying the pieces. Yeah. Anything else, Mike? That's it. Okay. Um, Danielle, did you have a question? No, you no. looked as if you were going to ask a question. <laughs> no, nothing for me. Um, Sonny, I'm going to I'm going to ask if anybody else has a first round because you've already spoken once. Uh, Tim, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Hi. I want to try with the easy ones first and. The more we get to the not so easy ones. Okay. <laughs> you mentioned uh, DOD permitting earlier. What is that? 
not, I hope not DOD. <laughs> yeah, exactly. the Department of Defense. That's exactly what I thought when I heard it. <laughs> I've heard you say DOD <laughs> permitting. Uh, uh, DOT. DOT. Department DOT Defense. permitting. Okay, thank you. I'm like, what are we doing now? <laughs> that was. A, that was close. Like, I'm getting old. My eyes, are, my eyes are going, and now my ears are going. Perhaps it was all me. I don't know. <laughs> Told you I'd go with the easy one first. <laughs> um, the uh, so, well, I forgot what the police. I forgot what the police call it, but I still call it the fence. The Ocean Boulevard fence. Mm -hmm. uh, your department has some uh, hands in installing and uninstalling and storing that. Is that true? You mean uh, the, the, like the crowd control fence yeah. was put up this summer? Um, actually, no. <coughs> they, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, we, yeah, I think we did help install, but I know that they've been fairly good about uh, when they picked it up uh, just before the uh, seafood festival. They have they have their own trailer for it. Uh, it's not stored in my yard. It must be stored in their yard. Um, the amount of assistance they asked for it was very minimal. Okay. If anything, it was probably just a backhoe with some forks on it to lift up sections. But no, they're very self-sufficient on that. Thank you. Told you that would be an easy one. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I was going over all these various lines and came up with a couple that just kind of stuck out at me, and I hope you'd speak briefly on them. Um, Sewer line maintenance is up 17.65 percent. You want to speak to that very briefly, please? Uh, we still want to get Ann's Lane done. We have Lock Road that needs to be, uh, all that sewer needs to be replaced. It's all clay. Thank you. The uh, vehicle maintenance um, in the detail section, it's still labeled parenthetically as a new account. I think that's a, a remnant from last year. It's from no longer year. a new account. Yep. If you could remove that parentheses. Sure. Um, good. good. Uh, Part-time wages on down transfer station now. Yep. Um, up 25.68 percent. Yep. We never. We used to have a part-time uh, person to work the transfer station. Um, they left. Um, we ceased that. We actually hired the person back. Uh, James James Hafey. He's our staff engineer mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't uh, that he was uh, lacking in his work profession after that the decision was made by me after a number of issues at the um, transfer station to staff the weekend with only persons qualified if you will to do the work internally mm -hmm. uh, those possessing a solid waste license uh, and sticking with the contract giving the uh, the part-time work to the Teamsters first. So the reason that line is up is because you didn't have a part-time person there last year right. and you're getting back the guy you had a couple of years ago. Well, he's back, but because he's not a Teamster, I'm not putting him on the transfer station on the weekend. Plus, there'd be no cost savings because now that he's a town employee full-time with benefits, oh, I see. it would so be. So he's not a part-time? No. Part -time. Okay, right. so that's a different topic. That's correct. All right. So I'm not clear as to why the part-time is up. 26 percent, roughly. All the other, yeah, the other increase was that I stopped paying eleven dollars, and I'm paying fourteen for my part timers, which is actually equal to what the starting salary is for either SCA or a Teamster. You know, I thought I saw that discussion at the selectmen, um, and I thought eleven dollars was a bit low. I heard the comment that McDonald's is paying fifteen dollars an hour. 401's dishwasher got $19 an hour this summer. Up to $10 an hour. So that's a far cry from the 15 I was there at the selectmen's meeting. So uh, $11, $11 an hour seems more reasonable than it did prior to uh, season. When you're comparing it to McDonald's at $15 an hour, $11 an hour is like, well, Going to 14 isn't going to help us, right? Mm. But if we're going to compare it, it to McDonald's it at $10 lie. an hour, $11 an hour seems more competitive than to, than 14 versus $15 an hour. It did, it did for us. It worked so for I'm us. like, you know, so this is all this is about is just that um, 11 to $14 an hour raise. Mm -hmm. That entire line. Is that right? Yes. 
<coughs> the wastewater hauling we've already established we need to reduce that right so yep uh, i'll get back to that a little bit later groundwater monitoring you you already spoke about that up to 550 percent uh i just want a very brief answer as to why pfoas without acronyms oh sorry <laughs> I wish I knew what PF always stands for, but anyhow, um, no, the, the the same situation or to be proactive about the, the same situation that uh, came out of the Coakley landfill and or that Merrimack and their water distribution system is having to deal with, mm -hmm. um, if you will, the chemicals used in the manufacturing industry leaching into the water and or leaching out of landfills. So the recent increased sensitivity about PFCs is what's driving this line on? No, PFCs are polyphenol. Yeah, that's what's coming, that's what's allegedly coming out of cocaine, right? But we're dealing with, and we've been asked by the state to test for PFOAs. Okay. Which is similar to PFCs. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's part of the process. I, I saw the list and there's like 31 variations of that one acronym or chemical. Right. Something to do with creating and disposing of plastic, right? Right. And so that, that increased level of sensitivity relative to the uh, PSC plumes mm -hmm. is what's driving this 550% increase, is that right. correct? And we have a director from the uh, DES, Department of Environmental Services, to, state. To, ta to test for those okay. under our permitted process of closing the landfill. Oh, okay. I wonder if they're doing the same thing to Coakley Landfill. Are they doing? They sent the same letter to everybody who has a landfill that is closed. Okay. So everybody's happy. And, and you would you would attribute this to the uh, political noise about the PFC plume? I think it's the state's uh, response to get as much information and a handle on it, so that we can have a rational discussion on it. Okay. Um, you have vehicle maintenance. You may comment about it being too low. As a quote, entertain a discussion on increasing that, correct? For the solid waste vehicles, yes. Yeah, waste collection. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And also I note that in uh, you have this replacement equipment thing here going on as well, right? It's 60000 which is actually going to be... Mm -hmm. Paid for out of the 2017 surplus. I'm using the term surplus because it's less letters for me to write. Um, but that actually means balance. unassigned fund balance, yep. right? Fund balance. So don't anybody get in the board of selectmen get upset at me. <laughs> <laughs> Just using common language here. Yep. So that sixty thousand dollars you're saying, you know, sort of, you know, get rid of that because it's already been decided to use the uh, surplus from this year's budget, right? Correct. Okay. But yet the vehicle maintenance is too low. Yes. Now, when you say too low, how low is it? It's half of what we really need. So you need 50% more, is that what you're saying? Yeah. So you if, need... If it were 90, I'd be in a better position to make it through next year. Well, you're... you're uh, first of all, your, your budget is, uh, from last year, is... Uh, 49.6, we'll call it 50, just for discussion, okay? Right. We spent 83 and you already, prior. And you've already, as of September, it's been over 83,000. Right. So you're already over that on that yep. subline item. Nothing, yep. nothing illegal about that, so no one get excited, but uh, it is a growing management problem, right? Yes. Collection of trash is a management problem. So when you say go from 50 to 90, you're actually saying nearly doubling it, actually. Right? Yes. And what is that going? What are you going to plan on doing with that money in terms of maintenance? Uh, are there, are there can, in your vision, do you have repairs that need to be done? It's no, it's it's, it's literally um, EGRs. Each one of the vehicles has; they're all having the same problems. One of the things is, uh, and the reason why we wanted to replace it is, uh, Mike can probably be more prolific on this discussion than I. But there's a reburn for, uh, for the diesel fumes. Exhaust mm -hmm. gas regeneration. Right. EGR. Some of the newer vehicles use a fluid 
that mixes with the gas to, to reburn re it. And it's injected into it. And it's injected. It. These three vehicles don't. Yeah. But what they do rely on is a super hot uh, exhaust system to literally reignite those fumes because they stop and go 50, 100 feet, 50, 100 feet, 50, 100 feet. They never get up to the really that temperature. Mm -hmm. They clog and they have to be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. The last three have been rebuilt 13,000 apiece. Is there a possibility of retrofitting them so the new design? With a sledgehammer? They got so much money in those <laughs> trucks, they can't afford to do that. Well, the trucks are probably already exceeded their half-life, right? I would say so. So the question is whether you plan on extending their life or, or not, basically, right? I mean, you know, no point in putting in a lot of repairs on you know, we don't, changing we that we don't these, see is going to live another year or two. We bought these vehicles that are for $160,000 a piece, and the, the, we've had them now for five or six years. I'll go back and look at it, but I'm, I think we've rebought the vehicles again. And, and if, the, if we go another three years with them, we're going to buy them again. Right. If I had my, if it was the vehicle parked in my driveway, I'd have turned the keys in on it all already. Yeah, but we're talking about three, not, three huh? vehicles, right? But it's three vehicles. Right. So I mean, it may make sense to like start replacing the worst one, one year, and then the worst one the next year, and until you get. That's what was. Well, maybe not every year, but maybe every right. other year or something. That's other what was in the Warren article. article. Right, was to replace one per year. Uh -huh. And it was in our CIP, the fiscal plan that you asked for, one per year going forward. And what's the status with that uh, uh, strategy? Given all the financial Good. requests being made this year, that current Warren article is dead. Uh -huh. It will not be coming forward. I, I will yield to your question. Oh, oh yeah, it's related to what you're sure. talking about. What is the Warren article that you're referring to? It was the vehicle replacement Warren article. My understanding, am I correct, Fred? It's, it's, it's passed over. They have passed over. over. Okay. <laughs> vehicle purchases yes. for 522? Right. Yeah, we actually agreed last night to have Plazic and Sanderson help us out. Okay. And we included that warrant article in we threw that in with the bonds just because it was oh. over half a million okay so it hasn't been so it's not totally dead yeah no we're okay. just gonna yeah. okay. sort of throw that into the mix for okay. the financial just, planning right. just yep. to further educate me on the vehicle maintenance which mm -hmm. is the topic at hand thank you for that by the way very helpful thank you uh 5.2 million is that what i heard it was it's 522,000 522,000 and assuming you got that 522,000 what, what would you be using? What would you be using it for relative to the articulating arm trucks? We were going to replace one sidearm packer truck. Uh -huh. We were going to replace one of the oldest dump trucks, the okay. six-wheel dump trucks. We were going to buy a yard ho a used yard horse for the transfer station. Okay. So if that more article is passed, then you're able to buy one of those uh, one. replacement trucks. Right. Then your likelihood of having increased vehicle maintenance is not going to be as high as you currently perceive it to be, right? If it doesn't pass, it's going to be even higher, isn't it? Correct. So they kind of interplay going on here. Well, it's one of those cases where you you know you have, you have to plan for one or the other, yeah, or yeah. literally both at the same time. I mean, if it does pass, what are you going to do with the? Uh, I would trade it in. You're going to trade it in. But understand the lead time to get one is it took all the, the two new dump six wheel dump trucks that we got two years ago took a full year almost to get here from the time you voted mm -hmm. to the time the purchase order was filled out they started fabricating them until they got delivered heck it snowed last year before <laughs> we had the last snowstorm of the year then they delivered the trucks so these, these new trucks they're going to have uh, the new Variation on regurgitating the exhaust. Well, we we go back. We we we'd join the rest of the world and use the, buy the fuel additive. Would have been a lot cheaper. Urethane, right? Urea. Urea. <laughs> oh, that sounds like something that goes through our pipes, doesn't it? Pipe. <laughs> DEF is what they call it. That's the acronym. Diesel exhaust. Well, I'm not sure, Chris, exactly how how, how I should address that. Maybe I'll just pause on that and let you give another. Uh, Point of view a little bit later on, okay? 
but I am open to to doing something with that. Um, I think I have some more easier ones here for you. Let's say under a wastewater treatment plant, we got the part-time wages up 27 percent. Speak briefly. Again, 11 Again, just 14. pay raise. <coughs> 83.33% on stone ice. Uh, hired equipment for the winter rental. That is, in fact, something that should be relabeled, I think, you know, like uh, winter contract plowing or something like that. It could be retitled. Yeah. So that's just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Told you it'd be easy. Uh, <laughs> building maintenance up. Is it building maintenance? Yeah. No, that's gasoline, I'm sorry. Electric, you already addressed that, right? Yep. Um, did you bring up a, a question that was emailed to everybody, I guess, but primarily to you? Was that raised? I didn't hear. No. Okay. Chris, uh, we received an email from uh, Mike Pierce, which I believe he was CC'd mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. uh, he asked a question about a union contract or something like that. Right. Um, I partially did address it when addressing the overtime in the transfer station, but I do have a response. Um, okay. And for everybody's uh, Would you application. email that, re reply to the email, reply all with that response? And you're happy to read as much of it as you want to, but I would oh. like to see electronically okay. as well. From all right. right. Okay. Um, Could you read the question, please, first? The question was, why um, don't we still use a part-time person to be the manager of the transfer station on the weekends um, because it would result in a uh, from Mr. Pierce's uh, assertions it would re definitely result in a, a decrease in, in salaries and thus benefit to the budget so my reasons were um, uh, it was my decision to make all work and working conditions within the department as safe as possible to protect the employees and the residents who visit the transfer station. The transfer station is a work area that has trip and fall hazards that are best minimized by staffing the station with personnel who are acutely aware of the situation. Um, a huge por portion of our residential waste, at least the delivered portion, comes in during the weekend. It's the highest risk time we have. I made a decision as the director not to staff it with someone who is not a full-time employee uh, of the transfer station, at least most of the time. Um, the way it works is uh, within the union agreements is if you're the head of the transfer station, you're the transfer station coordinator, where you get you, you have the first cut, if you will, or first try at working the weekend shifts. The reason why we had had a part-time person in the past is Mark Richardson, as the current coordinator, had had enough of working every single weekend. Um, after Jim Hafey stepped away as the weekend coordinator, um, Frank Swift, Teresa McGinnis, uh, Toby Spainhauer all elected to step up to the plate as Teamsters and share in that that work because they're all all three of them are more acutely trained and aware of what needed to be done my second reason for staffing it the way we have is that each week the state of waste disposal and recycling changes and the, my decision was to staff the station with personnel trained to identify hazardous waste or other potential substances which would cause loss or injury to the town um, We've had uh, wood pellets. Oh, they went out a week ago, thrown into the transfer station. I drive into the station, the trailer's on fire because they've been pushed forward. It's those kind of um, risks that are um, inherent with transfer station operations. And the reason I feel, and I put down that, I understand that the focus of the budget committee is to examine our budget and seek possible cost savings for the taxpayer. This position is one where I believe that the taxpayer is best served by staffing the transfer station with the best trained staff as possible. And that's the decision I made and why I made it. <clears throat> I'm looking at Mike's email now. 
I, I believe that the question he was asking is clear, it's clear. He's asking uh, where in the union contract uh, it, it specifies. As you, you said last year to his question, yeah. when he was on the budget committee, he asked this question, and your response was the union contract requires it. And according to his email, he's been looking where in the contract he hasn't been able to find it. And he was asking for you to direct him as to where to find it. The only thing and, that in uh, the contract that speaks to it would be Article 10, Section 1. Overtime will be offered on a rotating base within the job classification. Overtime will be distributed as evenly as possible um, because of those, partially because of that language. I also went with the, the and, current staffing methodology. And in Pierce's email, um, he writes that he did find in the recognition clause right. words that, in effect, say the part-time weekend position is not a union position. Correct. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he's objecting to the fact that you're using union personnel to fill a non-union position as defined by the union contract. So I wanted to be clear that his email was properly represented in this body. You've given your answer. I'm not going to argue about it. I just wanted it to be clear as to what was going on because not the whole world of TV land got this email. Correct. But everyone in this body did get the email. We can enjoy it. And I'll enjoy seeing your email response so that we can look at it more clearly. Okay. And now move on to Sue. Other interesting stuff. Uh, the sidewalk repair, Jennifer. Um, an annual discussion that's become between you and I, right? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we talked about, uh, first of all, is the sidewalk repairs in the budget that we did this year and the ones proposed for next year from the budget, is that making those sidewalks ADA compliant? That is what we are working on, yes. So that every sidewalk you touch becomes ADA compliant? That's what I like to do. Is that what you're actually doing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, like I like to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to hear it. It doesn't make sense to do it twice. We talk about that all the right, time. Right, right. I'm going to touch it. Let's touch it and make it right. Exactly. I get less done, but I get it done right. The first time. <laughs> twice, cut once. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, we talk about the the dream of how much is gonna, how long is going to take to complete the entire town's existing sidewalks, given what we're doing presently. The answer was previously, well, I don't know. Correct. And we thought, well, can we have a plan as to how and when we can get there? And I'm sure you guys have been way too busy to address it, but I wanted to know I haven't forgotten it. Okay. All right. Uh, pretty easy, wasn't it? The Lafayette uh, Road uh, resurfacing and underground utility stuff. Um, I got an I got an email from another constituent uh, that actually reads these contracts, I guess. <laughs> and, and that constituent claims that there is a uh, in the contract a one thousand dollar per day fine for going beyond the completion date in that contract. Mm -hmm. Is that a true statement? That is the wording in that the is contract. That's a true statement, okay. So when you went and asked for a suspension of the contract until next spring, that basically suspended that clause as well, right? Correct. Correct. But it wasn't mentioned that we were sacrificing a $1,000 a day fine, which would have been revenue to the town. I did not mention, I think, my exact words, if you go back and look at the meeting, was that so that the contractor would not be penalized due to the conditions that he ran into. So right. I would equate a thousand dollar fine of penalizing a, a contract. Sure. That's a penalty. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And now the public knows it was a one thousand dollar day. I assume per day or per work day. Fine. Per work day. Okay, great. Uh, so I've done my job to that constituent who wanted me to ask that question. Okay, so now what I've got to deal with is this we've got a reduction of fifty one thousand six hundred and sixty four dollars on uh <laughs> Yeah. And then another 60000 on vehicle maintenance because uh, it's going to be funded by the 2017. New replacement, equipment replacement, not vehicle maintenance. Okay. Yeah. New equipment, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. So we got reductions on the table of $111,664, which we're going to be considering. And so one could say, well, that gives us a little wiggle room in terms of this this need for, you know, potentially more maintenance. So. I've given you a few moments to think about that a little further. If you want to have something more to say about how we could be advantaged by spending, putting more money in that subline item. I think I was clear that said double it from 
essentially 45 to 90 would be what I would like you to do. So take back part of the 60 credit and the 50 credit and add 45 to that one. Well, that's what I was looking at for the pitch, but I'm trying to figure out how can I get a sense of ROI on doing that, return on investment. Oh. Your only return on investment is, with that particular thing, is averting loss uh, or averting risk. Um, we pick up trash, um, something that can be very putrid, can, you know, something that can uh, detrimentally, I think, affect the residents and the businesses and the beach area. So it's something we are obligated to do. So I, I can't really consider it a return on investment. My car I need to get to work every day. I don't really consider that a return, return on investment. It's my duty to get here safely. Um, so um, just like wastewater, I don't think there's a return on investment in that, at least a not uh, acutely definable one. But it is, uh, you know, like Ben Moore said one time, you handle everything from shinola to snow, and that's my job. Last winter, um, would you consider that a normal winter in terms of? Uh, More normal, yes. It was a normal winter. Right. Okay. So we had a normal winter, and we didn't have any great emergencies occur throughout the year, right? Everything was more or less normal. Well, all Sundays. There were all days our staff had off. All the snow. All the snow. Weekend work. It was all weekend work. So it was a normal year, which is pretty much all we really could plan for as a normal year with a little... Correct. Yeah, okay. The winter 14, 15, you, you really can't plan on. Right, exactly. Yeah. 120 inches of snow. And so take it. having a normal year, you had budgeted approximately $50,000 on the vehicle maintenance. You spent slightly over $83,000. No, no, Tim. No, that was actually that's 2016. No, they they've spent 58, 58, eight. Thank you. The actual is September 30th, but in 2016 the full was 83. That's correct. Yeah, but that's vehicle. Please don't equate vehicle maintenance for s trash collection has anything to do with snow. Oh, I understand. No, no, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting. That. Let me finish. <laughs> you got you got that. You overspent that subline item. You got that money from somewhere else in your budget. Yeah. Um, which was not under stress. And apparently one of the places it was not under stress was your snow removal budget because of it being a normal winter. Yeah. So that's how I see the relationship there. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, at the moment, I'm not convinced that we should uh, do anything there because there's obviously room elsewhere in the budget should the need arise for the maintenance. If the, if the maintenance occurs, you're going to do it, period, anyway. Uh, and you'll find somewhere else because you've done that historically and there's no real issue there. And I'm going to shut up and I'll wait to help someone make the amendment that reduces this budget as we had previously discussed. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you. Um, does anybody else, Brian, did you have any questions? Everybody's, everybody's had an opportunity to ask on the first. Okay, so Sonny, go ahead. Oh. Yeah. I'm curious. <coughs> have you mapped all the roads in the town to know the condition of... Yeah, we have a uh, very lengthy spreadsheet with all the roads. Uh, matter of fact, roads like High Street and Winnicott are actually broken up in subsections because they all can't be done at the same time. With that, we've correlated the um, condition of the, the sewer lines, or at least identified where we have uh, major leaks, where we have uh, clay, where our oldest clay is. I've got something like... Uh, 8,000 linear feet of, you know, just six inch clay alone, and then eight inch clay and 10 inch, it just goes on and on. Um, so yeah, we, we have that and we do do a priority system. Um, we can actually queue up the data to tell us what are the 10 worst streets paving wise, and then what are the 10 worst streets paving wise with clay under them. Um, it's about the same 10 to 12 streets show up in the same two queries, just in a slightly different order. Yeah. My reason is, you know, World War II, the, the reason the European infrastructure is brand new is because it was destroyed during World War II. You know, we're with the original from the 30s and the 40s. 
And it seemed to me when you go into a road, you should you don't put the utilities on the ground and, you know. Do it right, once right. But something else you should also realize, Europe spends on their, on their gross national products somewhere between 11 and 13 percent on strictly infrastructure improvements. The United States typically four to five. Yeah. Uh, so well, they, they, I think it's because they're denser in population. They, they're more acutely aware of the, the need to do some of those things. Yeah, they don't spend any money on defense. I'm not going there. I wonder. Yeah. <laughs> the other question I have is on the recycling. Waste management has a cost of living increase. Did you make that statement? For the hall? Yeah. You pay $90 a ton. To we pay, they have a cost of living increase on uh, refuse that we throw away. Yeah. And they have and a cost of living increase. Is, no, recycling is cost this town $0 thought, per yeah. ton. It does cost us about $125 a ton to transport it. Uh -huh. but not to dispose of it. Uh -huh. Right so now, they take it at $0. Right. Right. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. All right. So some things are working well. The other issue that's been raised is some businesses you pick up the trash, others you don't. The town should have a policy, you know, but that's a big item in your budget. It, it, it is something that is always under discussion and always open for review. I know the single businesses, for instance, if you're along Ocean Boulevard and you front Ocean Boulevard, um, you get carts. But if you're a business on, like Foss, no, I don't pick up Foss's trash. Um, I don't pick up, if I have to go on private property on a business, I don't, I don't pick it up. In other words, if they don't have street front. So not every business gets yeah, that's Reference what I'm saying. I, I, it's not your decision. It's the town's to set a uniform policy. Yeah. And you mentioned the street lights. Street, light, street lights is a, owned by Unitil. So the town pays a flat fee for it each year, and I'm sure it goes up every year. Anything else, uh, Sonny? Mm -hmm. you, all, you all set now? <laughs> Thank you. As Mr. much as you can. Wait, I have I have one thing I want to ask you. You said something about um, the under the the five hundred five hundred and two uh, five hundred and two uh, thousand. Yeah, for the um, vehicle five hundred twenty two for vehicle replacement yeah. right. was a Warren article. And you mentioned something about a low boy or something like it's that. It's called a yard horse. Yard horse. Okay. Now. I, I remember, I remember, well, whatever, okay, low boy, yeah, yeah. Plus, whatever. Uh, <laughs> this, that's the truck, you're going to buy a used one. Isn't that the truck, I thought, that we talked about this last year, because there was a fire and, and, and it doesn't have the hydraulics or something on it. I thought you, I, wasn't there a Warren article, or, I know we talked about this. It was, this. guess how many points it failed by. Oh, and it failed. I guess how many. One. Was it one? Was it was that the one? <laughs> one? Okay, it. okay. So that's the same truck you're still trying to replace. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I thought I just wanted to just but try that to was that it. it was for safety, you're hundred percent right. I it thought that you that already got it. Example. And that's why I was wondering why we're talking about it again. Okay, thank you very much. That's all I need to know. And yes. Sonny actually reminded me of a topic that just struck my mind yesterday. I was I was putting out my track. And I got this big blue barrel. And I got a little bag in there. And for a whole month. And you know what it was? Banana peels, coffee rinds. But you had it in recycling? No, blue barrel. Green barrel recycling. <laughs> I thought you knew that. It's <laughs> 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 just It struck me when I was going out there, you know, what a waste of resources that was, you know. It also struck me that you know much of that is would be good mulching material, wouldn't it? And then it further struck me that at the end of my street, which is where Ocean Walk lives, mm -hmm. I noticed that they got like 10, 12 barrels along, along that, that the side of the road. And I imagine most of their refuse is in fact 
mulchable. Mm -hmm. Have we ever looked at using uh, at mulching this rather than than putting it in a landfill? Composting is they're actually rewriting food composting regs at DES right now. And, and two high school kids at Winterconnet are actually leaders in that field. Two years ago, two, the seniors did a they did a pilot composting program through the school. So it, no, it definitely has been looked at. Okay. But it will just like you know, um, I, I've looked at the cost of getting rid of trash with the tipping fee that we pay. Yeah, it's uh, 156 dollars a ton if you take all the cost in, into cons consideration. If you look at the transfer station or look at recycling, that's still $124 a ton because I picked up the cost of the trucks, the maintenance of the trucks, the fuel, the driver. The well, the transportation we're not going to be able to get out of there, in my opinion. So the, but the question we, is the tipping fee. If we go really with composting waste, that will be proportionally $75 to $100 a ton. It's going to be very manual, very labor intensive, and very, there again, I'll be asking you for trucks to haul compost. Mm -hmm. But, you, you, I mean, you can actually sell it once it's composted to go practice. Mm -hmm. So there actually could be a source of revenue. Right. So there is potential there in the future? There is potential. Okay. I'd be happy if, I'm not, never really looking to, I'd be happy if I could just get rid of it for free, to be honest, when the program right, right. starts. Well, so that then it would reduce or offset yeah. waste disposal fees. Because we're that looking at replacing the trucks benefit. and how we do right. our, our refuse yeah. disposal. Right. I think it's important to consider that as a uh, a viable option to oh, be looking at, and, and that's why I wanted to raise it. Definitely being. I didn't know about the winter kind of people. They're doing something. Their project came out uh, successful. Today. It was successful, but it's it's on very on a very much a small scale. Of course, it's a and then they pilot. found somebody who would want to come and take the the swill, if you will, or the the material. Yeah. And I think it went to a pig farm. But yeah, it definitely it's got sure. reused. Yes, all yields we do. Thank you. Right now. Right now. Thank you. Immediately. You're talking <laughs> compost piles. I happen to have put it in my backyard of compost when I first moved to Hampton mm -hmm. and do a lot of the stuff of what you were just saying you were taking out in your ash barrel, which made me think of something. Is there a possibility of some place in Hampton or near the dump or something where the people, if they wanted to, could bring their compost and create a town compost pile that you wouldn't have to take it anywhere? And then after a while, the compost becomes five or ten years becomes usable usable, and also you get paid for it. You could sell it to farmland and all that. We, is we, is we, part of that a potential? Technically still do. I mean, um, uh, you can put anything you want in my leaf pile. <laughs> and I'll just, you know, leaf between the, that is the, the leaf post pile. The leaf, yeah. you can the, put the, the leaf, leaf waste. Yeah, but they only picks up leaves like twice a year. <laughs> no. You ever go to dump and turn well, we can get a whole parallel. But just the yourself. sheer volume. The leaves are very dry. They take a if you can mix them with a good portion of grass and keep it turning, and if you want to bring any compost, if you will, or the coffee grinds, the whatever, throw it right in. We just turn it right in. Now this year we got, we, we restructured the contract. We asked for 160 cubic yards of compost material. This is the first summer where we've actually had, for the whole summer, a pile of compost material for the residents to use or to take. There's still some there. Cool. The rest of it they took at no charge to us. So that, you know, so we did get a cost benefit from it. Um, so yeah, I mean, so we have one of the biggest components of a composting portion, although if I do get food grade waste in, it's going to have to be turned on a much more frequent, frequent basis. So to keep down the vectors. So we yeah. couldn't do it until you get the agreement that you'd be turning it over to prevent what you just said. And that the state you years, wouldn't want years, me to come down and drunk, no. put my eggshells and my coffee grinds in your leaf pile. Years ago, honestly, if we did, I'd set a, an area aside where you could, and then I'd pick it up on a daily basis and mix it with a compost so That's that it idea. was deeply buried. Years ago, we had. Uh, I think an ineffective recycling you know, with those little tiny green bins we used mm -hmm. to have, yep. which was a very ineffective uh, recycling program that this town had. 
and the selectmen had a recycling committee, which I believe still exists, um, which really uh, spurned this whole new initiative, I think, uh, along with others that were selectmen on the board of selectmen that were uh, following through with their recommendations. But I think if the recycling committee still does exist, it would be great if they could pick up this and try to come up with some sort of <laughs> similar program that they did with the recycling stuff. I mean, we can save, uh, I think, some real money uh, in terms of tipping fees. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just wanted to lay that thought out there as a general idea, okay? And once again, I'll endeavor to shut up. Thank you, Tim. Um, <laughs> at this point, so we have a motion and we have a second. The motion was originally made by Danielle, the second by Tim Jones. Um, at this point, we're going to vote for this, the bottom line that you made the motion for, and then we will make amendments. Okay. So, uh, we'll finish discussion. Yes? Could we repeat the sum, please? Daniel? Danielle, please. Uh, <clears throat> $5,465,813. Okay, thank you. All those in favor, raise your hands. Unanimous. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. The uh, DPW director has given us uh, indications that we should that we have two subline items that need to be reduced. Yes. And they total one hundred and eleven thousand six hundred sixty-four dollars. Okay. Um, and I'm sure Daniel would like to make that amendment to reduce that. Right, Daniel. Yes. And I'll, I'm sure that I would second it if nobody else will. Okay, so make the motion, Danielle, and clearly state the number for Barbara. And, be, and you, you double check your math, correct? All right, yeah. So um, I'd like to make a motion to reduce by $111,664, which makes the bottom line number $5,354. Sorry, $5,354,149. Okay, you have that number, Barbara? Okay, and we have a second by Tim. All those in favor? It's yep. unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Chris. Thank before you, John. you leave, Before you leave, I just want to, um, I want to mention that uh, I know that you have a, a warrant article with the wastewater treatment plant. We've all been given one of these books. Uh, most of us, maybe all of us, have read every single page. Um, and I heard you talking at the selectmen's meeting about um, allowing the selectmen and also the budget committee people, if they would like to come down to the, um, the wastewater treatment plant to take a quick tour. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I just wonder if we could leave it as I don't, I, I don't, I'm not going to try to organize that we go in groups or whatever. I would like to think that perhaps, uh, Tim. I have a question. Uh, th that's a very technical and lengthy document, so I hired an independent consultant. Would my independent consultant be allowed to come with me on that tour? Uh, absolutely. Thank you. No problem. The, um, the, yes, you can bring Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but not here. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, so if anybody wants to go down there, um, call you know call another member if you think you might want to go together with another person. Um, I might want to ask Bob Ladd. I might want to ask Tim Jones. Who knows? But uh, perhaps we could you know go as, as little groups. I'm going to leave that up to the individual. And then the other thing I wanted to just mention before you leave is that um, on our schedule um, for our future meetings, we may, um, I've got, with that particular article, it's pretty lengthy, and we may want, as a committee, and we can decide this once we get to other business, uh, we may want to have you come in and make a pre, you know, a big presentation like you did with the selectmen, yep. um, and do the pictures, the uh, slide, whatever, all of that that you did. Um, You'd be glad to. And 
and what we'd probably do is I've got four snow days built into the schedule. Mm -hmm. We'd pick one of those days. I'd let you know well in advance, okay? okay. And so that's just something I wanted to mention for you, okay? No okay. problem. Okay. Yeah, because that that is a very big, big uh, issue, and I'm looking forward to talking about that and, and you know getting into it and making sure, um, as I had suggested when I talked to the town manager a couple of weeks ago um, that I think that you need to um, perhaps make a video that you can put on to Channel 22 and keep looping it mm -hmm. because back when uh, Bill Wren was the police chief and they were trying to replace that uh, cinder block <laughs> building down there at the beach, he made a video and he showed you know what it looked like on the inside and the problems and the roof collapsing and different things and if you had a video that was possibly able to capture this nightmare okay mm -hmm. uh, people would probably uh, i think they need to see yeah. visually yeah. and realize the importance and the conditions the working conditions ventilation corrosion um pumps that uh, things that just are frozen open or frozen shut um, it's an incredible, incredible thing, that, and, and we need to really get out there and make sure people understand what's going on here, what we're asking for. It's not something, it's not something that's, um, it, it's an absolute, absolute necessity mm -hmm. that we address this I agree. and address it very soon. Um, there are things that I don't even know if we can wait till very soon. There are some things in that book that need to be done now, today. Yep. There are safety issues, and I, I don't want to talk about this anymore because we'll be talking about it so much in the future, mm -hmm. but I don't want to see somebody get hurt. There's, there's a lot of that, too. Mm -hmm. Slippery floors and, mm -hmm. and things that are missing railings and, and open pits that people could fall into. There's just too many, too many things. So in any case... With uh, respect to touring the plant, yes, at any time that meets your respective... And, of course, it works with your schedule as well. You just make right. that very clear that I can't do it today. I maybe right. can do it next week type of it's, thing. It's really going to be up to the two chief operators, Mike Doobie and, and Mike Carl. Mm -hmm. I do have to say, though, that there will be certain times, for instance, when we have uh, by cell phone delivery. Mm -hmm. It's a strong chemical. Um, the plant would be off limits to everybody during those particular times. Absolutely. I also have to warn you that... Um, for instance, if you go in the headworks, it will literally take your breath away. If you have an asthmatic condition, do not. Well, we'll bring you to the outside, but don't go inside. I would strongly suggest. Okay, that's so. that's very good. I know we don't want to talk about, it, but I just want to say one thing because just I went there yesterday, mm -hmm. and I think I talked. My call said that you guys were planning on having a couple people from Channel Twenty Two yeah. walk yeah. through there with a camera, yeah. but. And that's all well, and I think that'll be great having it on Channel 22. But for the budget committee, especially, and I think maybe later close to the town meeting, if you could arrange certain days, because yeah. okay. when you actually go there and smell and the moisture and the ventilation, it's it's awful. Okay. okay. Yes, Bob. Uh, I, I wonder if you couldn't add to that video the flooding at the beach and group that on. Where you're going to have more articles concerning that? It's, it's a, it, you know, if you show what's going on, the likelihood of response is so probably bad. those projects um, are more. I, I would agree with you, but I think they're, they may be uh, PowerPoint presentations that we put together and then and get the channel into and have them. It'd be painfully slow to say, well, here we are watching the tide come in. <laughs> you just have to go near yeah, the peaks right, right. Yeah, and show the barrels floating yeah. up the street. Okay, Regina, Actually, Jay Diener took some fantastic pictures yep. of a king tide. I don't know whether it was a king tide The king tide contest. Did you uh, see they those? just announced the winners, uh, I think, yesterday. And Hampton, I think, Hampton went all. I was just going to say, I think Hampton took four out of five. Yeah, and the pitches are pretty uh, significant if you look at them. Tim, you wanted to say something else? Yeah, I have to. I'm okay. sorry. I okay. don't want to. Many years ago, um, the selectmen, yes. none of them are presently selectmen, except one, uh, used to have uh, a meeting in which they 
paraded or campaigned for all of their favorite Warren articles. And they ceased that practice because it was increasingly perceived as a propagandist uh, move. People were not allowed an opportunity for equal time, would oppose them, etc. And so I wanted to just bring some sensitivity to this. I don't have any problem with you bringing facts out, but to actually use uh, public television as a campaigning vehicle, I think, is extremely problematic. I was so I just wanted to have some sensitivity introduced into that. Thank you. I, I was considering it as an educational tool, but enough said on that. Thank you, Tim. Um, I think that's all for tonight. Thank you very much for coming in. You're doing thank a great you job. Thank you all very much. All thank of you. you. Yep. Um, thank you, Fred, and thank you, Christy, as well.